thank you for you here. Um, and they have a question from Tom, and they want to know uh, how was to mix um, Harry Potter and The Flash. Yes, it's wonderful. I mean, I'm not so much mixing it like a, like a cocktail, but um, <laughs> yes, it's great. I was saying earlier that it's, it's quite marvellous that both franchises are best symbolised with a lightning bolt. It's quite ironic. <laughs> um, it's wonderful. Uh, it's a very different world, to be honest with you. It's a very different kind of... Uh, well, nothing's even obviously going to be close to Harry Potter as far as that wizarding world, but... Um, yeah, it's a new world for me. I'm not a Flash fan. I wasn't a, a, inherently a Flash fan. Um, Fan, yeah, well, I, exactly. When it first came around, I said, I don't think this is particularly my cup of tea. And then I watched one episode, which turned into 34 in about four days. And that was enough for me. I said, I'm in. To me, it was like watching Spider-Man and Friends together. <laughs> so it had all the personal relationship of, of Friends, which I think is really the core of the show and the, and the, and the meat, meat on the bones. Um, but with some fantastical elements, you know, some superhero stuff along the way to keep it entertaining. So I'm having a great time, and yeah, the best is yet to come. Thank you very much. Cheers, mate. Bobby Garden. No, no. no worries. I was waiting to say that. <laughs> uh, for the Malfoy men, yes. um, your fictional family fell in line behind Voldemort. Without delving into your personal politics, um, how do you think your characters would have reacted to our uh, new American president? <laughs> Without delving into our <laughs> Uh, I think Lucy would have been all for it. I think he'd put a little white pillowcase on his head and charged right up the hill behind him. <laughs> Anna. Hey guys, um, so I, I know today's like the first day of the celebration, but I wanted to know how the atmosphere has affected you guys. Sorry, being here? Everywhere. Like here in the park. Uh, yes, uh, I clearly missed the front end of that question. Do you want to what ask what do you What do you mean, the atmosphere? Like, how is it, the crowd? The crowd, the atmosphere, the, the, the event, mm -hmm. really, how does it affect us yes. as actors? Well, it's lovely. I mean, we, we feel very welcome here. Um, it's lovely that, that everybody's here, that most of the people here are here for Harry Potter. It's, it's, you know, for us as being part of that is, um, yeah, it's fantastic. But there's always a great atmosphere within the park here anyway, because everyone's here to have a good time. So. A lovely place to hang out, but uh, even more so during the celebration because uh, you know more people are here for, for Harry Potter. I guess I'm very excited to walk down Hogsmeade. I'm all about just walking around. You can literally feel it. I swear the energy is powerful between the people, and it's quite good because I was there last time for about an hour and no one clocked me at all because everyone's just looking around. They're not looking at muggles dressed as muggles. So yeah, <laughs> so, weirdly, ironically, it's a great place for me to go and be incognito. <laughs> uh, we did uh, we did some rides, but not in Harry Potter World. So I'm desperately keen to get there because I was here a long time ago. And there's been a whole bunch of new stuff that's opened since then. But also, people here it's a celebration. Literally, people love Harry Potter. Well, it's not like when you bump into an actor in the street that you've seen in the show. You like, but it, when they come up and they're particularly nice to us, it's more that they're acknowledging that these stories were a huge part of their childhood, and um, and you feel you know, there was a kind of wave of positive energy and and. Uh, and love and kind of uh, um, that's slightly lacking in the world which is one of the insecure place at the moment so it's nice to be somewhere that's a bubble of something so positive oh, um yeah i i it's, it's just so lovely to come back into this this world um the fans have always been exceptional to us um and they've stayed with the films um for so long now and they've never um waving their loyalty. Um, so to come and be a part of this celebration, it's uh, it's brilliant. And I think there's something amazing about, um, you know, everyone talks about like Harry Potter or Star Wars or Star Trek, all these kind of geeky kind of um, fandoms. But they're all spread out around the world. Cause I'm a huge Trekkie, I'm such a wizard, but I love it. Um, and yet you've got this celebration where everyone can come from all over the world to this one weekend and all just share in this one, um, celebration of this this passion of theirs and the fact that we get to experience that with them it's such a, f a fun friendly environment and Tom's right the energy that comes off that from everyone is uh, it's tangible it's brilliant I love it shut the front door you're a Trekkie <laughs> I know <man. laughs> you're gonna taste it. Uh, so, so there's families coming together so quite a lot we met today lots of parents of kids 
and you go, who who brought you here? And it's like either the parents are keener than the kids, or what you know. It, the, the, this event, but also Joe's stories, the films, that will bring a community together of people that might feel more alone, might be sitting, you know, they, they don't have traditional pursuits, they're not great jocks or they're not great sports fans or whatever. And uh, but they come together because of this mutual love, but also brings families together. They're out having a great time together. Where I've got teenage kids, it's very hard to find anything to do where they just don't roll their eyes and uh, shrug their shoulders and slam the door. So it's fantastic to see the kind of this community come together. For us. Yeah, it's lovely to see families celebrating the films here as well. You know, you've got you've got parents who were obviously fans of the films who had kids, even kids as young that they, they wouldn't have even been born when the last film came out. There was a, a little girl this morning with her mum, and her mum was dressed dressed as um, uh, who is the who looked after the plants? What, Madame um, Sprout? Sprout, Sprout. Yeah. Professor Sprout. She was dressed as, and then her yeah, little girl was dressed as a mandrake in a flower pot. Oh. The little girl, I think, was really confused. Why am I in a flower pot? <laughs> but nonetheless, well, it looked great, and uh, it's, it's just terrific seeing generations now experience. And older people, there's a lot of people on mobility scooters and stuff. Um, Absolutely, in their eighties and nineties and stuff. Uh, I'm not sure I can think of anything else that, that draws that many people together. Yeah, it's nothing. There was a Dumbledore on a mobility scooter. It was fantastic. Yeah, it's a great, great outfit. People just getting involved, and you know, it's um, just some of the costumes. They're better than the ones we had, some of them. Aren't they? So, having been a part of the franchise for as long as you have. No, I'm going to stop you. Daniel's Franchises Daniel's sell burgers. <laughs> Franchise that when someone makes a film, with a bunch of, blow, they blow a bunch of stuff up, takes money to the cinema, they add another film on, another Roman numeral, they add The Rock or whatever that is until nobody <laughs> buys tickets anymore. We were part of an amazing story that was broken into eight parts. And, uh, and having been a part of that story and the evolving wizarding world as it's continuing to grow, what are your hopes and aspirations for that world as it continues to evolve? He wants Malfoy world, don't you? Yeah, I, I think there should be a Malfoy man a ride, uh, certainly. Nothing, I just hope, my 11 year old just read all the books uh, again. And I just hope that the stories continue, people watch the films in whatever new, you know, scratch and sniff virtual reality formats come out. And I just, uh, what was amazing making them, considering that they are, yes, they're big commercial projects, is there wasn't a trace of cynicism from anybody involved that we ever met. On the set, even though, you know, it's not like making an indie movie, we all do it for love, you're all part of the back of the van, there's thousands of trailers and, you know, miles of sets and stuff. We were all as big a fans of the stories and the characters uh, as any of you or any of the people who turned up this week or anybody anywhere queuing up for midnight for the book. And that, I think, has maintained across everything. The people who designed the park here, they, you know, they're, they're usually the designers from the film, Stuart, who's, who everything comes from a place of authenticity and kind of reverence for the material. And so I just hope that continues and that cynicism doesn't creep in anyway. Matt? <laughs> Matthew. Um, well, you know, Jason really hit the nail on the head when he talked about uh, the stories being so uh, so universal. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I used that joke last year in reverse. Um, yeah, but it's, it's true. They're so they're, they are so universal, and 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 the uh, the demographic is so wide and varied from all across the globe, um, from different genders and age groups, and I just hope that that continues. Um, you know, when when Jo was writing these these stories, um, she put in so many uh, relatable um, scenarios, um, lots of contrasts to things that have happened in the real world, in history, and, and, are, and are happening today. Um, and I think that, that that's so important that through this story, people can actually consider the world around them in real life. And um, and I hope that, that that we stay true to that, that we carry a, a message in there. You know. Of the the friendships, the love, the the good versus evil, these 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 inherent messages that, that people around the world can all relate to, and I just hope that that continues. So, you know, today's Holocaust Memorial Day, and uh, when I was playing uh, Lucius, and people suddenly ask about him as if there's a kind of cardboard villain on the screen. There's a very, very recognisable racist, a eugenicist, and supremacist there who's acting out of fear and thinking that the past was a better time and scared of muggles and scared of the future because of his place in it. Because like his place was some time ago when he was uh, part of the super elite and could look down on the rest of the world. And you don't need to look too far without making cheap points to find many people, many politicians standing up on those platforms. And those, those issues are, are never more relevant than today that are dealt with in this kind of magical world of schoolboys. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why the books just work on so many layers.